In this short video, we'll be talking about the chikungunya virus. Chikungunya virus is basically a virus known as alpha virus and it belongs to the Togaviridae family. It's a mosquito-borne virus, also known as arbovirus, which stands for arthropod-borne virus, and it is transmitted via Aedes aegypti. So let us try to understand the basic biology by understanding the structure of this virus. Here is the enveloped glycoproteins. These are the lipid envelopes. These are capsid proteins. And the genetic material is viral positive strand, single-stranded RNA. Now, here is a host cell on which there could be several receptors. One of the receptors which is used by the chikungunya virus is basically MXRA8 receptor, which is present in many muscle cells, epithelial cells, and even fibroblasts. Anyway, once this particular virus interacts with the receptor, it leads to receptor-mediated endocytosis, and via clathrin-mediated process, it gets in. So after endocytosis, it would dock with the endosome and release its genetic material into the cytoplasm. This genetic material which is released in the cytoplasm would be translated for several proteins or immediately early proteins that would be utilized for DNA replication. So this is an overview of the viral life cycle inside any of the host cell. So this is the chikungunya virus. It gets in with the receptor-mediated endocytosis. It's, I mean, it releases its genetic content into the cytoplasm, which gets translated to form non-structural proteins, which would be used in future for replicating the genetic material. Eventually, the genetic material gets assembled with the capsid proteins, and ultimately, the virus forms and moves out from out of the cell to infect a new cell. Anyway, so this particular virus is affecting specific cells in the dermis region of the skin and it can grow and increase in number in those cells. Eventually, after the initial increase, it can also move into the bloodstream. So when the level of viruses increases in the bloodstream, it will lead to eventually viremia. It has been also seen that cerebrospinal fluid contains chikungunya virus particles and RNA. That means it can also be found or it, it is actually neurotropic. So it can affect the brain as well. However, the consequence of these viral infection on brain is poorly understood. Anyway, the symptoms include fever, headache, joint and muscle pain. So this is kind of like a signature. The extreme pain in the joints are very common to these particular case. Unlike its uh, sister virus, which is basically the dengue virus, which caused dengue hemorrhagic fever. But anyway, <clears throat> there could be fatigue, rash, nausea-like feeling, etc. In the blood, there would be an increase in inflammatory cytokines like IL-1, IL-6 family cytokines. There is a, a kind of clinical triad of this particular infection. Obviously, there would be fever, maculopapular rash, and basically joint pain. So we have to understand that this virus increase its number dramatically in the skin. It affects the macrophages, it affects the skin dermis cells, it affects the fibroblasts as well. And the debilitating joint pain is a prominent symptom of the acute phase of the viral infection. So it occurs within the two to five days after the fever. So anyway, Proximal joints are more susceptible for pain compared to the distal ones. So the site of viral rep, uh, number increase or viral replication is in the brain, lymph nodes, spleen, liver, muscle, etc. So obviously, wherever, wherever they increase in number and cause problem, there could be pain. Basically, in muscle, there, are, there is a lot of muscle pain and the joint pain is the most prominent signature of this particular disease. Let us talk about a little bit immunology so here is a curve where you can see the detection levels of the virus and the time in days so obviously day zero is the site of infection eventually it uh, the infection rise and the number of viral uh, particles also rise in the body but after after seven days it starts declining and after like 10 to 12 days it would be not detectable using rt-pcr tests anyway after the infection, there would be rapid increase in IgM and eventually slowly increase of IgG antibodies against these viruses. 
the acute phase is marked by the production of interferon alpha interleukin 6 mcp1 whereas the chronic phase of the disease is associated with elevation of gmcsf and il6 family of uh, cytokines so the diagnosis is based on uh, qpcr because qpcr or qrt pcr is best for diagnosing many viral infections like covid like dengue and also in this particular chikungunya virus also there are some antibody based diagnosis like any other viral infection but again qpcr is more specific and sensitive compared to the antibody based diagnosis so there is so far no vaccine available in the market but there is one potential candidate which is a life attenuated vaccine known as vla1553 and uh, who knows very soon this would be available in the market so there should be some desired feature of the chikungunya virus vaccine which are uh, following basically it should be uh, it should evoke durable immunity it should be a single shot one it should give immense protection against the viral all viral strains circulating and it should be low cost easy to ship and all these aspects should be taken care of but anyway i hope this video was enjoyable and short if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe see you in next videos